Here we go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a brand new sweet podcast. We got you got me and Cody. We're back. We're doing another podcast. We're catching up, doing some things. It's been a long time. Cody, yeah. how you been, man? You know, we haven't done a podcast in a couple of weeks. I've missed it. We've all been busy, but we're here. We got a big lineup of stuff to talk about today, and that's gonna be fun, man. Yeah, that's gonna be really fun. And you're right. I mean, I think busy is the very definition that we should use here because both of us have been between screenings on screenings and work on everything on your end and school and work and everything else. It's it's been nuts. And it's it's kind of like not really being able to catch your breath, but we are back and this is awesome. I miss this. Yeah, I do too. This is like literally my favorite thing to make. It's just casual talking, people talking about movies, about video games. Well, pretty much everything we're talking about today is yeah movies. But, uh, you know, it is the sweet podcast. That's what we're doing. I'm Zach, you're Cody, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, for the new listeners, if you're here, thanks so much for watching and or listening, whatever you're doing it on. We appreciate that a ton. But uh, yeah, so what's been going on with you, man? I know you've been writing some things. I don't think you've mentioned that on the podcast. I don't know if you want to give that a little plug yeah. right now. Yeah, sure. Why not? So at the beginning of the new school semester, I went up to the school's paper and I was like, hey, so you don't have a movie section. And I think I would be a good candidate for this since I see movies pretty much every single week. And they're like, yeah, we've been actually searching for somebody. So the editor in chief had me send a, a piece of writing to her just so she could judge on whether she thought I would be a good pick for them. And she read it. She said she really liked it. And the, the person they, my personal editor for the paper, he said he really enjoyed the article as well. So now I'm writing for them. And I've also got a couple of podcasts going on with the school's radio station. So See, and that's perfect. And that's a great example of people who want to get into things. Just network, just stock, just make a blog at first, just start doing something with it and then show them, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Do you want me to do it? Tons of hmm. school papers should do movies. I, I, I think every single publication and something should have something related to entertainment and movies. I think that movies is one of the things that brings a lot of people together in a necessarily, even if you don't think you're going to get along with some per people, there's people after high school that I never thought I would ever talk to. And a lot of them message me and they're like, Hey, what movies have you seen lately? So I, I I'm trying to see some movies. And I'm like, you want to talk to me about a movie? <laughs> okay <laughs> and it's funny how that works so that that goes a great thing that that's nice to see in there a good article yeah and but did, i know you did one on cabin in the woods which yeah i, I love cabin in the woods I and mean, the ones i've done so far is a simple favor which came out at the oh. beginning oh. <laughs> come on the ending was bad but everything up i know that i I, I, I gave it a c minus and it's hot like i still stick by that c minus I still recommend to see it, I guess, but I just hated the ending. I yeah. hated the ending for that movie. I mean, the ending's bad, but somehow it didn't bother me. But after that, I did an article for Cabin in the Woods, The Babadook. Oh, yes. And then the most recent one is not generally over any film because I'm actually working on a very particular film article right now, but it's more or less how horror films today are very much like what the Grimm brothers or Grimm brothers fairy tales were back in the day, 200 years ago, where it's just stories presented that are really horrific and awful to watch that people probably shouldn't watch or read about, but they do. And they get some kind of sick enjoyment out of it. But Yeah, very much so. Uh, hereditary. Yes. Biggest. Is that the movie was boring. 
I'm not even getting it's too early in the morning on my time. I'm not even doing my voice. It's Wait. too early for the trolls. It's too early for the trolls, you know? Hereditary! Huh? That you're pussy and you're scared of hereditary. No. <laughs> so what's new? Well, enough <laughs> enough with me. Or or <laughs> Halloween sucked. Oh, I've gotten that on my video. <laughs> but Which anyway, we'll so, talk about Halloween in a little bit, though. Yeah. Anyway, so Zach, what's new with you? Enough about me, newspapers, uh, and everything. Else. What's new with Call you? of Duty Black Ops Four. Got to talk about some video games on here. It is nice. the best Call of Duty since Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. I'm stating that, planting my flag in the ground. I love this game. Uh, nice. I haven't been this addicted to a Call of Duty in a very long time. Uh, the Zombies mode is easily the best in a while. Um, the maps are insanely fun. It goes back to kind of the basic things with a lot of customizable things, which I just think is fantastic. I think the multiplayer is very buggy right now, but when it's not buggy, it's fun as hell. And Blackout mode, which is kind of like their Fortnite mode, uh, PUBG mode, whatever you want to call it, where it's 1v80 people, maybe 100, I haven't really counted, but it, it's a blast. The map is beautiful. It, it has a bunch of little Easter eggs in it, and it's just so much fun with friends. Uh, it, it's a game that if you're a big multiplayer person, you got to pick it up. There is no campaign, which I don't, it didn't really bug me. I know this bugs some people, but I, I'm just glad that they're going straight to multiplayer and zombies and focusing on things that people really do play. I know people play the campaign, but I mean, this is like the big features, and I really like it. Zombies, you get three maps starting. Usually, it's only one. That That's awesome. I'm big. All I play is zombies all the time. I have like literally already like 17 hours in zombies. <laughs> wow. Geez. So, I play like three hours a day of that shit. So, but <laughs> I, I, I really like Black Ops 4. And then, of course, uh, after Friday, none of you guys will hear from me because Red Dead 2 comes out. So, uh, <laughs> so, the so bye. <laughs> so, no, no, just... well, no I, I have to make time for other things. But, uh, Red Dead, but I will say this end of January when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, no one will hear from me. Like, that much. No, nah, at, at least two weeks. At, like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna like probably do like one or two reviews like those weeks. But besides that, yeah. like nothing. Like, I'm social media gone. Everything gone. I'm just gonna be gone for a while. <laughs> yeah, I'll be gone. I beat it. The face of the earth. Pretty much. Yeah, that's I, what it's gonna feel like. I mean, because you get. I remember you talking about Spider Man. You said you were gonna give yourself a couple of days to beat that. With Kingdom nah, Hearts. No, nah, I beat. I beat like, Spider Man real fast. <laughs> yeah with kingdom hearts didn't they say something along the lines that it's like 80 plus hours of gameplay so which is... that was debunked so the story is supposed to be six it's 40 to 60 hours is the story which is, which is longer than the one and two already because one was like 20 and then two was like 25 30 so this one's gonna be it's 40 to 60 um, with most most of the play runs going from 55 to 60 hours wow, and then there's an okay. additional 150 hours for additional things in it i mean jeez that makes it the longest kingdom Hearts. yeah but the, the... the thing about kingdom hearts is that i i love the game so much that i will probably like i usually like once i beat it i'll go back through it um yeah so most likely i will most likely like the second i beat kingdom hearts 3 i'll probably just start another playthrough and go through it and a lot of square enix's games are like that like um final fantasy the last one that came out with nox is it or ignosis or whatever with his four other friends is one of the best games i've like ever played especially final fantasy i had no hope for that game and it was amazing cody i really recommend it to you if you want to get into a really big rpg um before kingdom hearts because you'd be if you go and get this today like you'd be able to beat kingdom you'd be able to beat it before kingdom hearts if you put like a like an hour or two a day into it um which trust me you won't you'll want to keep playing but it's really <laughs> good and it's like only 15 bucks now it's such a good game and i i cannot recommend it enough plus i haven't played it since but there's one level in it that is absolute trash it's so bad but they fixed it. And I don't know what they fixed in it, but they completely changed the level because it's completely different than the rest of the game. They changed it and the ending's great. Like the boss battles are insane. Like it is a fun ass game. And, and like the combat's like Kingdom Hearts. It's not like turn-based, like normal Final Fantasy. So if if Kingdom, like when I played this, I was like, this is the same team play, making Kingdom Hearts 3 right now. Like I'm so hyped. So if you want more hype to get on board, get Final Fantasy 15. 
Well, I I guess I'll I'm gonna have to look into that. But I know for a thing that this next uh, this next week is going to be very busy, as in besides school and all that other stuff is horror oriented stuff. I'm gonna be kind of packed because I I already made a promise to you that I'm going to I'm going to. And it's not going to be today because I have essays and stuff to work on. But Thursday, I don't really have anything school-wise, anything going on. So I'm going to hunker down and watch Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. I want to do reviews for all three of the Evil Dead films. And I then... and then it. You're, and you're then, making me horny. Oh, geez. I hope not. Happy. Happy time. <laughs> happy time murder. Yeah. Yeah, happy time murder. And then this... Uh, this weekend, I plan on buying uh, the HD remastered edition of the first Resident nice. Evil game because I want to review game. that. That's a really good and game. then, you know, Apostle aside, I want to take some time and actually binge the entirety of The Haunting of Hill House because yeah, dude, one- that's a show I've been bad at. I, I'm like only on episode five, but I've been so obsessed with Daredevil. Which yeah. I want you to watch so we uh, yeah. can review it. Okay, <laughs> look, I I will get to it. I swear. one episode a day. You could finish yeah. it in a week, almost a week. Okay, I I will have to do that. But here's here's a little fun fact for people who don't know. I'm pretty sure that Netflix is haunting on a hill house, like what Mike Flanagan did last year with Gerald's Game. It's actually a a book adaptation partially. And can I say this though? Uh, before I, we are going to move on to the, the first topic, um, yeah, because I know the trolls are probably going, Oh, where's the Halloween spoiler review? William Jaren, you suck. Getting there. We're getting, I'm there. never coming back here again. Yeah, please don't. I don't want you, but <laughs> um, people keep saying this is the scariest series, and it is thrilling. But the thing with Flanagan's, but the things with Flanagan's films, this is what I'm going to say. Flanagan's films aren't jump scary. There's some jump scares, no. but they're not scary. He builds atmosphere and tension. I've been right. able to sleep fine after watching the show. The thing that gets me is when I'm watching the show, I'm in that atmosphere. I'm on I feel like I'm there. Even if I'm at home, it's not like I'm in a theater. I'm literally I feel like I'm there. And I feel like that is what this show does so well. And every film he's ever crafted. Ouija 2. After I saw it in the theaters, I felt like I was there. I went home and I slept fine. But in the moment, I was scared. Oculus, same way. Gerald's Game, same way. You felt like you were tied to that bed naked, about to get effed by some musky moonlight man. <laughs> and um, what was the other film he did? Uh, Hush, another one that you feel yeah, like you brilliant. were there. That's what, that's what he does so well. And I love that about him as a director and just his standpoints as a person mm-hmm. and what he does. And I, I think a lot of people can agree with that, that he doesn't, he makes scary stuff, but it works. And might I say, I'm so excited for Dr. Sleep. Yeah. I mean, he's without a doubt, one of the best, if not the best director in horror today. I mean, I love James. I love James Wan as a director, but as far as, as far as what he's done horror wise, besides the conjuring too i mean and that was two years ago i mean i can't wait to see to i can't wait to see what james wan does next besides aquaman because i would really like to see him go back to his horror roots but mike flan mike flanagan is awesome and yeah, if absolutely. if before we get to to halloween or uh, our first topic or anything and before the the trolls have their day i will say that the trailer for the trailer for the new adaptation of Pet Cemetery, I think it looks amazing. Mm. Looks good. I'm, I'm <laughs> adamant. I don't like the original. I think the original's just fine, to be honest. Well, that, at least, that's just me. At least the music in the trailer for Pet Cemetery is. Yeah, no, the the trailer's really good, and I like that Jason Clark's in it. I love Jason Clark. I John. love that guy. He's so good in First Man. They've also got John Lithgow, which I was actually a little surprised by. But all yeah, right, so we let's should probably... move on to the first topic. Uh, Halloween's coming up, but guess what? We're not talking about Halloween spoiler review yet. We are getting into that next. That's gonna be our next topic. Is we're gonna talk about the box office, and then we're gonna go into our spoiler review, discussing about it. And this is entertaining because I still don't know what Cody thinks about this movie because he didn't make a Stardust, he didn't make a review about it. So this is gonna be very entertaining. Cody, don't tell me <laughs> when we get there. Because okay. I, I don't know what you're feeling, and this might be a really fun discussion, 
or maybe okay. not. Uh, but we are going to talk about our, our top five movies to watch on Halloween. Nice. So, um, I actually have more than um, five. More so, than five? I am going to do um, an honorable mentions and then go into my actual list. Okay. But how we're going to do it is I'm going to do my honorable mentions. You're going to do yours. I'm going to go five. You go five. I go four. You go four. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Yeah. So... Uh, first honorable mention is Rosemary's Baby. I, I've i watched it once. I think it's a very good horror film, and it's one that needs to be watched. Um, another one that is fantastic that I need to rewatch soon is Scream. I think Scream is just such a great thing on the genre that just makes it so much fun. Um, my next one is Insidious 1 and 2. I love the Insidious franchise, but at the same time, the first one I do not think is that scary. So I think that's one that needs to kind of at times be looked at. And of course, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, my other three honorable mentions, this is a little bit hard cutting them down. Um, I, I hate to do this. Um, I don't want to do this. But uh, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness are on my honorable mentions. I, I, I've picked, I, I feel like they're a blast to watch. And they're probably, like, personally for me, my favorite horror films of all time. But they don't make the cut for me as what films I think need to be watched on Halloween. And then, of course, my last one is Nightmare Before Christmas. I love this film. But for me, I find it to be also more of a Christmas movie. So it's one of those films that you should watch. But still. What's your honorable mentions, Cody? Okay, so my honorable mentions... This is probably going to be a little spoiler for our discussion later on, but my honorable mentions are number one is uh, Happy Death Day. I think if you That's just want, one. if you just want a fun horror movie to watch with your friends, like if you're having a Halloween party, I think this is definitely one that you and your friends can watch and have a lot of fun. Same thing with Scream. Like I would put Happy Death Day in the same tone with Scream because Scream is Scream is not only funny; it's a blast. It's kind of how i think about happy death day it's just a fun campy horror movie that pokes fun at the genre uh next up is the descent that's one that i caught two months ago and i remember when we did our top five horror movies a little while ago this is one that you recommended checked it out i loved it uh I wouldn't say, yeah i love the descent i wouldn't say insidious 2 for me but insidious is also on here for an honorable mention which one do you like more one or two uh one like i i nah, I, nah. second one's scarier well for scare factors yes i think, that two, movie, but... I think the first one is a better made film though i will go with you okay um next up i'm getting to, as we've discussed i'm getting to the other two evil dead films in the franchise but i would also put evil dead the first film in my honorable mentions and the one. and the remake as well i really yeah i really like it you know don't breathe that's a good one Oh, that is a good one, and uh, this is definitely a, this is definitely a uh, spoiler. We're down the road, but Halloween 2018 is in my honorable mentions. Oh wow! I honestly thought you didn't like the film when we were talking about it yesterday. We'll get we'll get into it. Actually, you know, I'm taking it out of my honorable mentions, and we'll get to that in a second. But okay. All right. All right. So let's get into our list. My number five is going to be Cabin in the Woods. I love this movie. I want to give a little bit back around it. Can I tell a little story real fast about this film? Uh, yeah. Cabin in the Woods. I I remember going to the theaters, sneaking in when I was like maybe 13 at the time, 14, 15, somewhere around there. And me and my friends snuck in and we told these two people right next to us, these adults were like, hey, can you pretend to be our parents? If someone comes in and asks and they're like, yeah, sure. We don't care. So we're sitting next to them, and no one asked, but we're watching the movie. And me and my friend went into this thinking, oh, it's Chris Hemsworth. It's Thor. He's he's playing a cabin guy, and he's probably going to die. You know what I mean? Like, we thought it was going to be, like, Evil Dead type stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, so no, I got gotcha. you. It opens up when two old men are walking around and discussing business plans. I'm like, did we come to the right movie? And oh my god, I did not know where this movie was going. And I remember, I wasn't scared at all. It's not a scary movie, but it's a total film that flips the horror genre on its ass. And yeah. I think changed everything for that genre that day. Um, it changed a lot for me. It made me appreciate horror a lot more. Because it wasn't a scary movie. Um, it has its moments, but it's just 
the mythology in there. Um, the the Easter eggs, the um when you find out what's actually going on, it is insane. And I remember me and my friend walked out and we're like, what the hell did we just watch? And now as of today, like I just love love cabin in the woods it's one of my favorite horror films of all time due to that reasoning of it being so different and man it, that's why it makes my top five i had just such great memories with it to film my wa- rewatch every year i have to you know i gotta uh i'm gonna be honest here cabin in the woods is also in my top five nice and it is my number five as well <laughs> but yes cabin in the woods i it, which is yeah yeah no but you anyway cabin in, you do that cabin in the good. woods cabin in the woods for all the reasons you listed it's one of my favorite horror films because of how it picks apart the genre one of my favorite i mean it's been out for six years a minor spoiler i don't think is gonna hurt but they're the scene where they bring up the dry erase board and everybody's making bets on what's gonna come out and there's i love a that list of every single horror monster you would ever find in, in a horror film that was one of my favorite parts of it and there's so many other easter eggs in this film funny enough a couple of weeks ago somebody in my audio production class he told me he thought cabin in the woods was the stupidest movie ever made but you know what i don't mind that though because some people just want a typical horror film and they might think it's stupid you know what i mean like i kind of get that like this is a very different type of movie that not everyone's gonna love so if someone comes to me and they're like i didn't like it i think it's kind of dumb i totally understand you kind of think it's brilliant like me i totally understand like i get the like my dad thinks it's just an okay film and I get that, but I just think mm-hmm. of how different it is. And it's one of those films that the first time you watch it, I don't think it hits you how much you like it. At least for me, it wasn't like that. Like, I liked it, and then I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And to this day, I'm still thinking about it. That's yeah. an effective film. So I, I loved it, man. Uh, yeah, I'm with you there. All As right. you can see, we agree. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, let's move on to my number four. My number four is The Descent. The Descent is one of the nice. scariest films I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's thrilling. It's claustrophobic. <laughs> and damn, I got everywhere. Um, Jesus Christ. Cody, can you talk about <laughs> The Descent for a second? Yeah, The Descent, uh, the Descent is a truly, truly terrifying film. I mean... <sighs> I the thing that makes it for me is the atmosphere, the tone, and most importantly, the the sound effects. Yeah, I agree. A, a, a horror film that has really good ambiance, really good tone, atmosphere, it's claustrophobic. So, Again, it's one of those films that yeah. makes you feel like you're there. Yeah, exactly. And everybody gives a great performance in the fact that they did what they needed to. They were all terrified when they needed to be. Yeah, uh, but, our oh, friend Riff actually just rewatched it for watched it for the first time, and he was really? to me. He's like, "What are these goblins?" <laughs> well, that's kind of a spoiler, but um, the whole thing about the film pretty much is these girls go cave diving or yeah, cave exploring whatever, yeah. and they get trapped in a cave, and it. Is it real? Is it not? Are these things seriously in there that's trying to kill them? Or is it just them hallucinating? What are these that, goblins? That's my favorite thing about the film. Is that it makes you feel like, is it real or is it not? Is it one of these girls that's going crazy or is it not? It's so gory. It's bloody. And it's not in that grotesque way. But it's in a scary way. They don't overuse the blood and gore. It's perfect i i think this is almost a masterpiece and the reason i love the descent so much and i'm so excited what this director is doing next he's doing the next hellboy and my god i'm so excited which i haven't told you cody i actually found the leaked trailer for Wait, hellboy. what yeah i was serious? someone you uploaded it? it to instagram and it is awesome it's awesome it got taken down but it's awesome i'm really excited with it. i'm really happy with it so Look out for that. I can't wait. See, I didn't watch the full thing. I just watched like the first like 40 minutes because I don't want I wanted I want to enjoy it on the screen, but I, I liked it a lot, man. Cody, what is your number four? Okay, so my number four is actually a tie between three. And that no is ties in here. It's a damn list. You know what, Zach? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a tie between three, and those three are the conjuring, hereditary, and the witch. Really? See, I I stayed away from a lot of those films, like all the Hereditary and the Witch. I I, I don't I wouldn't watch them on Halloween. But really, yeah. But go ahead, talk about them. Maybe I'm just a sick and twisted human well, being. Well, I, I just 
I feel like Halloween's more fun. Like I like those <laughs> films are like I have to be intrigued, I have to be interested. Well, the way I see it, I think these films are very good for Halloween time because not only are they exceptionally made films, but they're also very terrifying in their own way. And honestly, I just love them. Even if I don't watch them specifically on Halloween day, these are films that I'm going to be watching every single year in October because this is the month of evil things and it is the month of horror. So that's my number four. But Zach, what is your number three? My number three is a little film called The Conjuring, just like you were just talking about. <laughs> um, I think The Conjuring is a masterpiece. I, mm. I, I really do. It, it's a modern day masterpiece. Um, I think James Wan is the next Steven Spielberg. Uh, I've been preaching this. Him and Damien Chazelle, I think, are going to be up there. Um, but I think Wan's just great. And everything he crafts in The Conjuring, it's on Netflix, so you can't say, I can't. I don't want to go buy it. It's on Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, get a free trial. <laughs> just saying. But, but I, I don't I, want to. Yeah, but I really like The Conjuring. I, I love The Conjuring. I, 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 it, fantastic performances. Pretty much pretty true story. Scary as hell. And it's yeah. just it's so good. It's so good. The, it's mm. just amazing. What's your number two, man? You mean number three? Oh, number three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My number three... You know, I didn't know whether I was going to put this one in here, but my number three is Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Never seen it. Still, the Tim Burton. It is. I want to. I've just. It I've is never a, watched it. I, I can never find it on Blu-ray, so I just never find it's, it. It's. I mean, it's a masterpiece. Like, uh, we all know that Tim Burton goes for the dark gothic stuff with most of the stuff that he does with most yeah. of his productions, and. It works completely when it comes to Sweeney Todd. First of all, Sweeney Todd is was a Broadway musical, and it's not like Les Miserables or, or Into the Woods where it's 99% singing. There is very much... The story is... I would say it's probably 60-40, like 40% musical numbers and 60% just pure dialogue. And it's the story of a man. It's a story... <laughs> <laughs> it's the story of a man who uh, gets wrongfully accused by a judge because the judge wants to take his wife away from him. This man is a barber. He comes back. His original name was Benjamin Barker. He comes back as Sweeney Todd, and he starts uh, giving very special shaves to people until he can get to his his target. And it's as a horror as a horror film and just a very entertaining film. It's fantastic. Plus, it's an as far as all the other performances Johnny Depp is given, it's for me personally, it might top his performance as Captain Jack Sparrow. Like mm -hmm. the first film. Well, wasn't he nominated for Sweeney Todd? He was. He was nominated yeah, for best for best actor. Okay. And so that makes sense. It, it shows because when Johnny Depp is on screen, it's the performance is so good that he completely disappears from the role and it's just left with Sweeney Todd, the character, which is the best thing you can say about an actor's performance. I love that. I love it. So, yeah. And, and overall, Sweeney Todd, it's just it's dark. It's very messed up, but it it's an extremely fun movie to watch. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get it. Um, moving on to my number two. This one's for the kitties and the families. Uh, <laughs> Monster House. One of, the best, yes! one of the best animated films I've ever watched. Yes! It's scary. It's fun. It's entertaining. It has a great story. A very sorrow, emotional story with the background history into that house. The kids are fantastic. Like it, It's just great. It's one of the best animated films I've seen like ever. It, it's just so smart. And it's just about an evil house and it's animated again. It's a film that I don't want to go into much detail about if you've never seen it, but it is a film to definitely check out. It, yeah, it is. I can't say that much about monster house. I've only seen it a couple of times, but it is a very, very fun movie for the entire family. The interesting mm -hmm. thing is as far as an, I put the film kind of on the paranormal level to where it's the film, great. It's a film. That's another where, one. That's good great animation for sure but it's also a little bit more dark and more intelligent than your average kids 
film would be. Like the entire mythology around the house is something that I enjoy the most about the film. Mm -hmm. So Monster House is that's a that's a great choice. I agree. I agree. Uh, I am Paranorman's another one that you mentioned that I really, really like. It hits those small little topics, so I enjoy that. But what's, Cody, what's your two? My number two is something that we were talking about before. It's actually a double feature. It's Halloween from 1978 followed by Halloween 2018. Now, have I only seen Halloween 2018 once? Yes. But spoiler for, for later, I loved it. I thoroughly loved it. And I feel as though moving forward, I am going to buy Halloween. And it is going to become an annual tradition for me to watch the first Halloween film followed by Halloween 2018. Just the way the story progresses, the way the story continues, both Halloween films are an absolute blast to watch. And seeing how John Carpenter's legacy was carried on into the first, into the, into Halloween 2018 and seeing that how John Carpenter was involved as a producer and an executive producer. It, you just, and he feel did the it. score and he did the score. Yeah. The, and if you ask me, I, I, as far as the, the new theme for Halloween 2018 versus the old, the original Halloween film, it's hard for me to decide which one's better. Cause the score in both films is fantastic, but I agree. that is um, my number two. So my number two, or well, now my number one is the original Halloween. Uh, after rewatching it before going to this one, I've seen it twice now. Before going to this one, rewatching it this year, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I have not watched this film in years. It, it's it's so good. It holds up. It's amazing, and yeah, it's cheesy, but it's fun mm -hmm. and it's yeah. thrilling. And that's what 2018 also did, which we'll get into next. Mm -hmm. That's our next topic. So the trolls could stop. Um. But would yeah, you say I, I'll save a lot of my words for it in a little bit? Would you say? Would you say after Halloween 2018 comes on Blu-ray, would you switch that from just being the first Halloween to doing a double feature of those two movies back to back? Um, or just the original Halloween? I mean, it, it helps to rewatch the first one before seeing the second one or this new one, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I, I think <laughs> it does help to rewatch it, to be honest, because there's so many callbacks. And they're not yeah. like in your face callbacks like some films do, but nice callbacks. And I, I thought it was nice for that aspect. But uh, Cody, what is your number one? I know it's between one or two other My films, and I kind of want to guess. I'm probably wrong, though. I have two guesses. Guess. I'm going to guess the first one, okay, and if I'm wrong, I'm going to guess another one. And then I have no idea what okay. it is if I get it wrong. Okay. My number one guess I'll is it. This. Is it it? Cody? Is it it? Yes. What's your second guess, Zach? The Shining. You know what the funny thing is? What? Double feature! Oh my god. <laughs> You're right on both accounts. You are right on both accounts. Go ahead, talk. Okay, actually, you know what the funny... Th it, it is... Talk talk about this stuff because i also kind of wanted to say the babadook as well um but, but first of all in my personal opinion i love the shawshank redemption i really really do i think it's one of the best movies ever made for me personally as far as stephen king adaptations go i think the shining and it are not booked you know whatever you want to say the shining is it's a masterpiece in horror What's it's not a completely faithful adaptation to the book. It is a great film, and it was one of the best faithful adaptations to a Stephen King novel that there is out there. And you kind of get a different spectrum with with each because it you have a very fun, not campy, but you have a very fun, energetic bloody ride that is just fun to watch from beginning to end and bill skarsgård gives a very heath ledger-esque performance when he performs his pennywise jack nicholson and the entire crew behind the shining was there some was there a lot of cruelty that went on behind the scenes with shelly duvall and jack nicholson and what kubrick wanted to pull out of them yes there was but the shining nevertheless the product that was produced is 
one of the best horror, if not one of the best films ever made. So that's my number one shining and it double feature back to back. If you want to do a Stephen King thing on Halloween. At that, you know, I was about to say, why are you doing a double feature? I'm like, that's kind of cheating, but at the same Stephen time, King. Not. so yep, so you are right on that. Uh, so that is our top five movies of watching Halloween, guys. Please comment down below, tell us what you guys' thoughts are. What were are some movies that we missed that you think we wish should have included? Let's talk about it down below. But now the time comes, we are going to be talking about Halloween spoiler review, full on spoilers. Uh, Halloween took the box office, you know what I mean? 77.5 million dollars this week. Thought it was gonna make more. <laughs> Um, thought it was going to be Venom. It didn't. Good. I'll praise the Lord of Venom. Uh, let, knock, knock, let the devil in type stuff. Um, but Halloween spoiler review. Cody, give me your initial yeah. thoughts on it, and then I'll just take it away too. I thought it sucked. No, I'm kidding. I I thoroughly loved Halloween. I honestly... Have I only seen... Did I only just catch up with Halloween in the past six months? Yeah. I just... Six months. It's a great film. John Carpenter, what he was able to do, it's a masterwork. And Halloween 2018, my favorite part about it was the fact that it continues the legacy of Laurie Strode and her eternal battle with Michael Myers. And there, once we get to the actual heavy spoiler-esque element of this discussion, then I'll get into more specifics why I loved what they did, what they did. But overall, there was really only one element of the film that didn't work for me. But overall, it was a very, very enjoyable ride. And I plan on going to see it again on October 31st. That's exactly how I am, man. I, I absolutely loved love love loved mm -hmm. this movie um it's one of my favorites of the year apps a hundred percent yeah and i think one of my favorite things about the movie mm -hmm. in general is mm -hmm. how much fun it was is it the scariest <laughs> film i've ever seen absolutely no. it's not scary but it is fun it brought back the same aspects as the original halloween had it hit the nice callbacks the nostalgia and it was fun it was thrilling edge of your seat entertainment and I just loved what they did with it. I loved what they did with it. But let's go into the spoilers now. If you have not seen Halloween, mm. turn away. Go, go, go away. Uh, or fast forward into the video. <sighs> let's talk about it. Let's talk about yeah. the, the uh, what's your favorite scene? Let's what, what was oh, your, my, what was your favorite I thought, scene? I thought we were I thought we were gonna dive into what we didn't like about the film first because there's I not hear a lot. Let's start, let's okay, start my on. favorite scene. Well, there's a couple. There, there definitely is a couple. One of my favorite scenes is, of course, is Michael Myers getting his mask back. That was when he put. Yeah, that whole yeah, bathroom scene was I mean, great. I mean, I thought, I thought from the trailer that was probably when it was presented inside of the trailer. I thought that was going to be my least favorite scene in the entire movie, but no, it's one of my favorites. The other one, I wouldn't necessarily say is a scene but any any scene or sequence involving Lori strode or her family were my favorite parts favorite. of the movie yeah. and uh, the teenage elements when it comes into horror movies are usually stuff that i don't really like or buy into because i never thought they were that good unless it's done in scream then it's genius but the girl that the girl that played uh, Lori Strode's or Jamie Lee Curtis's granddaughter in the in the film. She's good. She's she good. she was one of my favorite. Oh, the humor we're gonna have to get into, but overall, just any when Michael Myers gets his mask back or any scene involving the Strode family was my favorite part of the film. Essentially, I'm with you. Um, my so it's hard. One of my favorite moments. Um. I, I'm probably in the minority. I love the ha I love the babysitting scene with that kid. Yes, I will probably yes. talk about. It. I don't know if you like. I don't know if that was your issue because I know some people had issues. But I, I <laughs> the humor did take it. away from the scene. But Cole, it was hilarious. Like I love that scene so much. He's like, oh, not today, running around like. <laughs> And then I just love well. the boyfriend and the, and the girl and the babysitter are sitting there, and he's like, send Tom up there. No, <laughs> like it was just. It was just great. That was just great humor and greatly written dialogue. They got such a good kid in there. Um, I will say I'm a little disappointed that they showed that he was in the closet in the trailer. Um, I thought that took away knowing that he's in there. You know what I mean? Like I knew he was yeah. in there, 
the second it came up. So, uh, but I, I love that scene, the brutal death of the, the boyfriend stabbed into the wall with the knife. Yeah. Um, but easily my favorite scene is the tracking shot. The, tr the one t long take when he's just going through the houses, killing these women for no reason, just the hammer kill. Um, the one with the knife through the window, like yeah. those, like it was just so intense. And when they had that split section moves, is he going to kill the baby or is he not? Uh, it, it was intense. And I, yeah. I really like those. Those are two of my favorite moments. And then I mean, one of my favorite ones is at the end, the final confrontation between her oh, and Michael. Yeah. And when Michael has her through the window and she grabs the shotgun and just turns around, just blows his hand off. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. And I just love how, you know, they didn't have any weird cult or witches to this thing it was just yeah. straight up michael myers is just a human being who's just crazy he's and a boogie, he's the boogie man is. and it was nice to see the the parallels with Lori strode as well in this film where we see that like she is instantly becoming in a sense also the worst version of herself too yeah she's you know what i mean like she is crazy in here yeah too she's ostracized herself from her family yeah and i love what they did with her character i thought she, yeah. she literally was sarah connor in here and yeah. i dug it but i want to hear what the thing that you're not liking about this film so maybe we can okay. discuss it a little more okay so first of all I, another shout out to one of my favorite moments in the film is when you get that last shot of michael myers in the basement yeah, when he's fire. surrounded by fire that was one of my th that's a beautiful shots it's one of my favorite shots of 2018 but the thing that doesn't work for me was was the guy that he's basically the new dr loomis from yeah the, um the, I, the I michael love myers you're the new loomis yeah uh, like i understand what they were trying to do for him but throughout the entire i mean I from the moment that he was introduced, like I thought him as a doctor working at the mental asylum, working with Michael Myers there, I thought that was fine. I thought if he was just one of the doctors who knew more about Michael Myers than anybody else, and they just left it there at the mental in institution, I thought that would have been fine. But seeing him carry on and his whole wanting to learn more about michael myers and learn why he's such a sadistic person and yada yada, yeah. yada. and the fact is he winds up being crushed under the boot of michael myers in glorious gory fashion yeah the, the pump it literally looked like a pumpkin got smashed yeah, it did or you know it looked like ground up hamburger <laughs> yeah um I, I, i'm with you because that twist was a. Uh, I i didn't hate it i liked it it was fine um, I, I didn't I didn't did, like it when he put on the mask. I thought that was just a little <laughs> unnecessary. I, I thought, thought that, that was funny. funny. You know what I thought for a second? So I had two theories for a second. I thought for a second that when that happened, I was like, oh my God, that's Michael Myers. He switched mm. him. I thought that was going to be Michael Myers. And then it wasn't. And then I was like, and then I was really hoping they weren't going to do this, that Michael Myers was dead and that he was going to pull mm. out the rest of the kills for the rest of the night. I'm like, yeah. no. I'm glad they did it, but it was a little weird from the wear the mask. Oh, yeah. Especially when he just, like, pulls <laughs> it off and he's like, whoo! Like, <laughs> yeah. stop. No. Stop. No. The moment when I was like, stop, is when he, um... When he kills, when he, uh, when he kills Frank. And he's like, so this is what it feels like. I was yeah. like no no yeah no. i didn't hate That's that i didn't much. hate it i didn't hate it i liked it it was fine but i love that he died super fast like yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one of the one of the best parts of this movie i know people have problem with this but it's all it's the callback to people making stupid decisions like yeah. i love that well and, i love the little callbacks in here like the ghost sheet yes. that was cool um my favorite callback in the whole film though my favorite one and my audience roared with applause is when she gets when Lori Schultz get pushed off the edge falls outside in the grass he turns around turns back and she's gone I loved yes. that scene loved that moment um I I just thought it was so good um personally I have one con with the film one what con how did the boyfriend not die you build this character up to die, and he didn't die. Come on. That's a good point, especially since she turned out to be such a 
Come on, didn't you, he never came back after the dance? Like, that, what was the point oh of his my. character? I was like, if he dies, that's awesome. I mean, that's the thing about this movie is that as you're meeting her friends, you're sitting there, you're like, you're gonna die, you're, you're gonna, gonna die. die, you're definitely gonna die, and you just keep going back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. Like, that, but again, that's the stereotypical slasher film. You know who's gonna yeah. die, and I think the film knows that. But how did the boyfriend not die? I don't know, especially since his their best their mutual friend he bit the dust but obviously her boyfriend who's a much bigger jerk than this well uh, they're all horrible people let's face it yeah. except for except for the granddaughter I, I will say that death though when when the guy gets put on the pike i oh. and, and when he first when he was talking to michael myers and michael was just standing in the shadow I, I laugh so hard because the guy was so drunk. Well, you're just sitting there. You're like, yeah, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, yeah, the breathing. The Michael yeah. Myers breathing when he's watching people. So can I say something about that once? Yeah. After the credits, you can hear him breathing. That's what I was talking about yesterday on Adam's live show. Yeah. You can hear. <sighs> <sighs> so. We'll get to that because I did take some Twitter questions and we do have some Twitter questions to answer about this. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I, I want to say one more thing about the Pike scene. When he stepped on yeah. his cape, I said out loud, and I shouldn't have said this in a theater. I don't like when people talk, but I said it to my friend. I was like, no capes. Edna Mode. <laughs> She's right. She's Edna right, man. Was... She's right. Oh, um, I love all the way now. The score, oh. brilliant. All oh. the nice little callbacks. Oh, there um, were... All that. Yeah, the callbacks were amazing. And the thing that I loved is that they they did little callbacks and took little pieces of the not-so-great Halloween films. I'm not exactly sure which one. Maybe it was Halloween 4 or 5, where you find out that Michael Myers, uh, Michael Myers was, as a kid, he was a sadistic person who you know, killed the other children around him when he was in an orphanage. It's not that way here. He didn't grow up in an orphanage, but you, you do find out that he killed his sister. So I, it's one of the, it's one of the Halloween films. That's just really, really bad. But I love that they took that little element from it and put it into this film. It's just Danny McBride, who is an extremely funny individual. The fact that him and Joe, uh, David Gordon green were able to craft something uh, craft a script that really really good and very very well constructed it's just mm -hmm. uh, this movie overall it's top 10 of the year for sure yeah i agree with you so let's get to some twitter questions i took uh what were some of your favorite little easter eggs like again uh this is from adam dolly um mm. my favorite personally was when she <clears throat> fell over and disappeared mm. I, I really like that moment um one of my other ones was uh ryan put it he loved the costumes from season of the witch the halloween three they were in there i really appreciated that yeah there's some nice things in there what about you anything that really stuck out as well uh i think i already said it no uh it was from one of the it might have been a halloween h2o where they found out about michael myers childhood but the little tidbit they they put in here that michael myers had a really awful childhood and he was an awful child i like that but also you know getting back to basics the fact michael meyer putting his mask back on getting scenes of just downright tension the first half of the film the atmosphere and the way it was set up was almost it was pretty darn close to the original halloween and i really liked how it was constructed yeah no i agree um, the next thing is Rhino t or sorry, Ash vs. the Evil Dead Peschel or Peschel Talks as following this movie, would you like to see a new night Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street? I, well, I don't know if he's on the news today. LeBron James is apparently taking his production studio to make a new Friday the 13th. I don't nice. know if this will happen, but, I, uh, I personally want Freddy. I don't care for Jason right now. Yeah, I want no. a Nightmare on Elm Street. I want them to do another it's, one. And especially I remember since, um, 2010 yeah i, I don't well, talk yeah, about no, that no, no. I didn't watch it. Uh, collider live though when i was watching them some guy called in and had a really good idea for friday the 13th i don't remember his name but i wanted to give that credit show and that guy he knows if he ever watches this he said he wants to take all the surviving girls of every single friday the 13th and bring them back to have to kill jason that's a great idea yeah i loved that's it a really I great loved idea it. i loved it um rhino rhino lantern or rhino tool ask did you guys like the direction that they took laurie showed being drunk scared and outcast from her family i did i yes. thought it made sense yeah 
Did you guys hate the doctor character like I did? Was his character unnecessary? I don't think he was yeah. unnecessary. I think he I don't think. Better. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Uh, like I said, if they had just if they had just set him up as if they had just set him up as a doctor who it, if he was, I don't like a lot of exposition in movies, but if he just gave a little bit of exposition of his knowledge of Michael Myers when the reporters were at the mental institution, I thought if they just left his character there, he would have fit perfectly. I don't I think they need. Um, I don't think they need to continue him on though. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he now this is the one question I was going to ask you, and I'm glad Ryan asked: Is Michael really dead? Hmm. No. To I be honest, so. if he's not, if he is dead. I'll be happy. If he's not, I'll be a little pissed off. I, I I think that takes away from the ending. I think it takes away from the ending and what it sets up, which another Twitter question actually brought up, but I, I think it takes away a lot from the ending. Um, That's a good point. That's actually... That and is a I, I think he point. should be dead. I, I don't... There's no reason to bring him back. I'm sorry, but I don't want him back. You had that final confrontation. Maybe she should have double tapped him in the head and she didn't watch Zombieland, but I, that's just <laughs> my thing. Um, Jamie okay. Perut asked us and this is why i'm asking do you see another halloween that that they tease the granddaughter to be the killer in the new movie like they did with jamie in halloween four and five that's where i was going to the last shot of her holding the knife my prediction is if they pr go on with this which they will make a sequel it, it's dumb if they don't because of money I, I i don't want them to but i think it's they're going to Monday. the daughter I feel like will be the new killer. Some people might not like that, but I think it works. Like, think about this. Lori Strode killed the person who has tortured her for her life. But now she's technically brought a new serial killer into this world with her granddaughter and that she's trained them in a with sense. Their daughter, yeah. So think about that with the knife at the end, just the way it was holding. I might, maybe I'm looking into that too much, but I think Jamie brought up a good point. What about you, Cody? What do you think? No, I agree. Honestly, I think that's a great idea. And the reason is because it would be a very, it'd be an interesting and cool direction to take it. And plus, you know, it might've been hinted in other Halloween films, but as far as this franchise goes, I think this would, this would also be something wholly original. Like, what if that'd be an interesting conflict of character? What it? Hmm. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. I don't know how they'll work it. Maybe I'm looking too much into it, but that that's just like how I was thinking for it. Um, and then the last question comes from Tyler Calvert. He wants to ask two questions. How is Michael Myers so strong mm -hmm. as in being in his sixties? And the second question being, I lost it now. Um, <laughs> He wants to, it was pretty much again, Michael, is he alive or is he not? Like how, how do we, if he does survive, how did he survive? And that's my thing is it's unrealistic if he did survive. And I, I mean, he's, he's just a man. Yeah. He's just a man. Him being strong. I mean, a 60 year old man can be strong. You know, you I, know what I mean? Yeah. Like think about Joel. this, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's my thing. Like he, he's just a big guy. Like he, he he's just strong like that that's all it is yeah. that's all i i mean look at uh look at stephen lang yeah I mean, so. just but i mean i i see what you're saying now and if we look at there was no easter eggs or emphasis or any hints that that basement there was any way for anybody to get out of there if mm -hmm. they were stuck down there so i'm gonna have to agree with you now like i see it as thinking about it a little bit more, it would kind of be thinking about Laurie Strode as a character. Since this is her final confrontation with Michael, it would kind of be disrespectful to her as a character, considering everything sh that she's gone through and it wouldn't give her closure after what she's gone through. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. So that's Halloween spoiler review. Um, you got any final thoughts to mention any like last closing things we didn't talk about? Now the trolls can be happy. Yes, they can. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Halloween. What was your favorite moment? What was your favorite part of it? Let's talk about it down below in the comments. Uh, that's where me and Cody are definitely going to be at. But we are moving on to our last topic. And it's a little one. Uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist are canceled. Oh, geez. The first two Marvel Netflix shows. Some people are saying Thanos snapped them. Some people uh, just don't care. 
I'll go as far to say this. Um, did I see this coming? Yes. Uh, I, I they're received fine, but the viewership is not there. But I thought Iron Fist season two was really good. And I thought Luke Cage season two was a little bit of a disappointment. But again, Mike Coulter is so dang good as Luke Cage. I wanted more. Um, so this is where I put the question out to you. Heroes for Hire, the comic book series about both of them. Do you think we will get it or do you think these characters are just done? I mean, if we if we do get it, I think it's going to it's I don't if we do get it, it's not going to be on Netflix. It, it's definitely not. It'll be on whatever streaming service Marvel is, Marvel is trying to come up with right now. But that's just a small possibility. Honestly, I don't necessarily considering the viewership and, and people's love for these characters didn't really show up in the numbers. I think while there is a chance that they could come back in Heroes for Hire, I also think there's an equal 50% chance that they just won't show up again. And, well, and that's where I go <clears throat> to say is, because I'll go to this, I don't think Jessica Jones will last past season three. And I do think Daredevil will get a season four, though. I After yeah. watching three, I, I just, I cannot see them not doing a season four. Not because of the story and stuff, but because they could have ended it and it'd be fine, honestly, where they're at right now. But I do think for the character and how good it is, come on. I mean, there's some like how I, I'm still stooped. Like I liked Altered Carbons. I have no idea how that, that got renewed. I have no idea how that got renewed because it was a very expensive series, more expensive than any of these. And it did not get the best viewerships or even the best ratings. And you know what I mean? Like, so I'm still kind of there. Yeah. Um, I, I want Heroes for Hire. I think Heroes for Hire is a very good concept for the MCU Netflix universe. I think one of the biggest reasons for it being good is because you get these two characters again. You can continue their smaller storylines, but Heroes for Hire isn't just them two. You can bring in Moon Knight. You can bring in maybe Blade for an episode and trying to spin them off just like how you did with Punisher. That That's why I think it's a good idea. Hmm. I can understand that. And, and it's interesting. Wait, has Punisher been renewed at all or no? Yes, Punisher's been renewed. It's already filmed. Okay. It's almost done. Okay. Well, that makes me happy because Punisher is a really, really good show. But I, I mean, when it comes to these two, and I'll be sad because I agree with you, Jessica Jones, I think it's next. I'll be sad when she goes, though, because Jessica Jones, besides Daredevil, the first season of Jessica Jones was my favorite of any of the, the stuff that Marvel is really? doing. For really? The first See, that's season. My, my list now goes Daredevil season three, Daredevil season two, Punisher, uh, Jessica Jones, Daredevil season one defenders no iron fist season two defenders luke cage season one uh iron fist luke cage season two and jessica jones season two yeah jessica jo jessica jones season two was awful like it was so bad it but i'm choppy I'm, yeah it's just it's a shame but anyway so, but yeah, that is our show. Thank you guys so much for watching this. We are back doing podcasts. We are going to be back doing another one hopefully soon. Um, maybe next week we'll bring one to you. Who knows? But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, it means a lot to us. Uh, we appreciate it. Tom, we'll be in the comments. Make sure let's start. Let's talk about movies down below in the comments. That's why we're here. But before we get going, Cody, where can they find you at? All right, guys. Well, if you want to find me besides here with Zach doing the Sweet Film Podcast and doing other various things on the YouTubes, you can search up my name in the YouTube search bar by just searching Cody Curtis should be the first name that pops up. I have my Halloween review up and ready to go. And if you want to follow me on social media, just go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Stardust, and pretty much any other social media you can think of and either search Cody Curtis or underscore Cody underscore Curtis. You'll be able to find me there. And as stated at the beginning of this podcast with the school system, I am in right now. If you go to USM, uh, usmfreepress.com or .org, you will be able to find all of my written work that I have done with them there. And if you go to wmpg.org, you will be able to find all the podcasts that I'm currently doing right now. So please do me a favor, do me a solid, go check those out. Yeah, guys, go check him out. He's a really good writer, somewhat, maybe. I don't know, but he's a good writer. <laughs> I've read some of them. 
Uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. My name is Zach. Of course, you guys find me here on YouTube where you're watching this podcast. If you're listening on iTunes, just type in Zach Pope. Uh, if you're looking uh, for other things, Sandwich on Films is another website I do. I'm a part of uh, Vance Movie Screens over there. If you want to go see movies early, go check it out. And plus, over also on Phoenix Film Critics Society, I'm a part of them. Go check it out, guys. You guys are all the best. Thank you guys so much for watching and all the support you guys give us. And of course, until next time, have a sweet life.